Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the brand new Sony a6100 and the Sony a6600. They just got announced yesterday, August 28th, 2019. And I just wanted to give a little overview and talk about my thoughts on the Sony a6100 and the 6600. So before going into that, I just want to talk a little bit more about the Sony a6400, which is what I'm filming on right now. And I only got this camera around a few months ago. So this camera has been honestly everything I needed uh, for an APS-C size camera and being that it does really good photo and video, this camera has been really perfect for me and what I do. And I'm sure for most people, the photo capabilities and especially the video is probably more than what you're gonna need unless you're doing some corporate type of stuff or weddings or stuff like that. But for an everyday camera or even if you're into more professional style photography or videography, this camera had everything like right. But the only downsides to this camera that I could think of would be the battery. It's not really that good. It has like 400 something shots with just one battery. And for the video, it's really not good at all. And the other bad thing I would say is the lack of IBIS. So the lack of the in-body image stabilization, honestly, like if your lens isn't stabilized, like my Sigma 30mm 1.4 lens, or if you have any other Sigma lenses, they're most likely not stabilized. And since they're not stabilized and the camera's not stabilized, you're gonna have a really shaky uh, image for a lot of your videos, or even if you're taking photos and you're doing like a uh, really low shutter speed, uh, you might get a little bit more motion blur on those pictures. So besides that, let's get more into the a6600 first. So I'm going to be reading a lot of these details of the new cameras on this uh, new picture I just saw online. I'll put it up right here as I'm talking about it. But pretty much for the a6600, we have a the same 24.2 megapixel APS-C size sensor. The ISO is still the same at 102,000. Uh, we have a 0.02 second, 425 point fast hybrid autofocus uh, speed, and that 0 0.02 seconds is like literally insane. I've never seen any camera do this before. Um, this camera does have like the same autofocus, and it's super fast. It also has up to 11 frames per second continuous shooting uh, with autofocus tracking. Uh, has real-time autofocus for animal and human and the great thing about the a6600 is that it does have real-time uh, autofocus or eye tracking when you're doing video which is really awesome and for this camera the a6400 uh, pretty much does track my face but it doesn't track my eyes in real time and that's like I mean, it's still good enough honestly but like um, having that extra eye autofocus with video is going to be a really good help for anybody who does like a lot of uh, video work and who relies on autofocus. Uh, besides that, there is silent shooting up to 8 frames per second, which has been great with this camera too. There's interval shooting for time lapses, which is great for YouTuber especially. There's in-body 5-axis image stabilization, and this is honestly the only reason why I would really upgrade from the A6400. There's the same 4K 30 frames per second internal recording in HDR, which really does look amazing to be honest, because they do have a 6K sensor, like kind of reading it down to 4K. The 6600 will also have the picture profiles, like the S-Log3, S-Log2, and the HLG. And then besides that, the only additional things are gonna be microphone and headphone jack. The A6400 or any of the other APS-C Sony cameras, they don't have headphone jacks. So this is gonna be something special in this, uh, especially if you're like, you're like a real filmmaker and you really wanna monitor your audio and everything. And then the next big thing is that this camera will also have the new Sony Z battery. And the Z battery is almost double the power as the old battery that I'm using right now. This one that I have for the A6400 only has around 400 something shots. And the new one, the new Z battery is gonna have around 800. And this is gonna come in handy for a lot of people making videos as well, just because that battery life is the same for video and it's gonna be almost double the amount of battery life that you get for the A6400. So pretty much those are all the specs for the A6600, but what I want to talk about now is the pricing. And the price of the A6600 will be $1,400 US dollars compared to the Sony A6400, which is $900. And honestly, at this point, there's a $500 difference between the A6400 and the 6600. And as the 6400 being now like the advanced, like the middle camera, uh, versus like the Pro uh, 6600, and there's really not that much of a difference that would make sense for 500 extra dollars. And for that extra $500, what you're gonna get is in-body five axis image stabilization on the A6600. You're also gonna get the real-time eye autofocus in video. And you're also gonna get a headphone jack and you're gonna get the Z battery. So for those four things, if one of them really does matter to you so much, then definitely go pick up the A6600 when it comes out. But for most people, I would say just please just skip the A6600 
and honestly just start looking at the a7 III at that price point because if you go on ebay and you search up the a7 III uh, you can find it for like sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars at this point and for brand new too so i'm sure you could get it used for even cheaper and it would honestly be a big upgrade from an a6600 having a full frame sensor is already enough of a 300 dollars price difference and it has a ton of other features and it's already known as one of the best hybrid cameras to date. So now let's talk a little bit more about the entry level Sony a6100. So pretty much I'm not going to read over everything else because it's the exact same as the 64 and 6600 but I'll tell you the differences that it does have. So the expanded ISO is going to go up to 5100 instead of the 102,000 and honestly I don't think that's a big difference at all because nobody's really shooting at anything above 6400 in my opinion or from what I've seen at least, but for me especially, I don't shoot anything above 3200, and with these APS-C size cameras, they're gonna get really grainy after 3200 anyways. So unless you really, really care about having super high ISOs, then skip the A6100, but if you're fine with that, then let's continue down this list. So some other differences with this camera is gonna be that the A6100 uh, doesn't have the in-body image stabilization, just like the A6400. So I'd say that if you are a vlogger and you want image stabilization, uh, you could go for the A6600, but I don't think that huge price difference would really mean that much. So I would recommend just getting a stabilized lens like the 18 to 105. So one of the biggest differences in the A6100 versus the A64 and 6600 is going to be that there's not going to be any picture profiles in this camera. The A6100 is not going to have the HLG or the S-Log3 or S-Log2, and it's pretty much just going to shoot normally. It really does depend on the type of filmmaker you are, but if you're just doing YouTube casually and just want to record in like really nice 4K content, but if you are a filmmaker and take this stuff more seriously, then I'd probably recommend getting the A6400, which has really nice picture profiles. The A6100 is also going to have the flippy screen, and it's not going to have the headphone jack like the A6600, and it's going to have the same W battery that the A6100 and the A6400 have. So that's pretty much it for all the details for the A6100 and now I just want to talk a little bit more about my thoughts on this camera. So I think that for $750 that this is really the best vlogging camera you can get right now. The autofocus and the flippy screen is really going to make everything just like an amazing experience with this camera. So I think if you're just casually vlogging or making videos for fun that the A6100 is going to be the perfect camera for you. But if you are more into like serious filmmaking, then I think you would probably want the picture profiles and go for the A6400. There's only a $150 difference, so for that $150, you're only going to get the picture profiles and nothing else is really going to change. So overall, let's go over each of the cameras and see what they're the best for. So the A6100, I think if you're a YouTuber, if you're trying to make some vlogs and take really nice pictures, that this camera is for you. I think the A6400 is the same if you are a photographer or videographer and you want to take video a little bit more seriously, I'd definitely go for the A6400. And if you're like a pro vlogger or if you have like thousands or hundreds of thousands of subscribers on YouTube and you really do this for a living, then the A6600 makes a little bit more sense to me. But besides that, the only other thing I could think of is for filmmakers, you can have the headphone jack, which is really good to monitor your audio. And what you're going to have is the Z battery, which is going to be able to last double the length of the W batteries. So if that stuff makes sense to you and you want to pay that extra 500 or what, $650 difference from the A6100, then definitely go for it. But what I would recommend is just to go straight to the A7 III at that point. So that's pretty much it for this video. I just want to talk a little bit more about my views and my thoughts on the A6100 and 6600. And I also know that the new 16 to 55 2.8 did come out and the other 70 to 300 ish uh, also did come out. But if you guys do want to see me talk about that and see my thoughts on it, Make sure to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you guys. So that's pretty much it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure to go down below and hit that like and subscribe button. And anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.